Zimbabwe's had a checkered past, to say the least. But I think what's important for every visitor to Zimbabwe is to separate what the country has to offer and its politics. You're here to enjoy some of the best wildlife areas in Southern Africa. This trip has been long coming. It's been a trip that we've planned for many years. For us as adventurers, Monopools is one of those bucket list destinations where I think everybody that really liked to travel need to see. My name is Graham Sharp, the owner of 16 Degrees South. We're a specialist expedition company and we specialize in creating extraordinary experiences to some of Zimbabwe's most wild and remote places. Matusadana is one of our more recent conservation success stories. Uh, it was a park that had been forgotten, uh, similar to Chisarera, low visitor numbers, inaccessibility challenges, uh, no air access, um, poaching a very fluid border with um, Zambia to the north. We are now seeing, and I'm, I'm very proud and happy as a park very close to where I grew up, seeing the park turn around um, and start to to reach what it, its true potential, what it could be. From Matusadona, we took a ferry across the Kariba Lake. That was fantastic. A few kilometers away from Mona Pools, I could barely hold my excitement as we edged closer to one of the most beautiful wildlife destinations on Earth. Now, I've been coming here since 2008. It is a phenomenal destination. It is difficult to explain it, but it's spiritual. It's beautiful. It is untouched and you can see that there is a lot to be offered you know if you walk through these forests it is truly magnificent it was our first morning in mona pools and the beauty of the sunrise and the sounds were mesmerizing we couldn't wait to get out and explore early morning game drive and everybody kind of went their separate ways to explore the park and to get to know the park where all the areas are. In Mana Pools, when you are here, take every single opportunity to see what wildlife sightings you can get. Right behind me, we have the Mana River mouth. And just a note, you are allowed to get out of your vehicle, but be very wary of where you are. Even in the campsite last night, 
we had some hyenas coming in and elephants all around and you do not hear them. So stay close to your vehicle and be wary of your environment. So I'm gonna drive around, still beautiful light and under these big trees, it just makes for spectacular viewing. Might be one of the most beautiful places I have ever been in my entire life. I am in awe of this magical setting. Right behind me here is Long Pools. It's one of the pools in Mana Pools. That's a lot of pools. And that's the thing about Mana is you've got all these water sources where the animals congregate. Gonna have a quick coffee and then head back to camp, clean myself up a bit, and then probably head out for another game drive this afternoon. I'm sorry, I'm just keeping a lookout because there's elephants right at the back here and uh, you have to be careful, of course. But right at this long pool, there's some big crocs lurking, catching an afternoon sun. So have a coffee and then back to camp. Mana Pools is a, an incredible national park. I would say on a local scale, it's a favorite in Zimbabwe, in Southern Africa, if not all of Africa, and I think globally it's a recognized destination. An incredible ecosystem, uh, one that's facing some challenges due to the damming of the Zambezi and, and other um, follow-on effects from uh, wildlife populations, um, certainly from your, your grazers and your your hippo, your impala and other things. But that being said, it's a fantastic park to come to. Um, it's a park where I think photographers just get blown away. I've seen many, many photographers arrive here and that first, first hand experience when you finally arrive here and, and see what's available to capture and, and uh, what's available to inspire you. Uh, the, the photographic opportunities are, are incredible. You've got a very rich a uh, floodplain environment, um, the river obviously brings all the animals um, into that, that river, river line or riparian woodland um, in some areas and that's, that's really defined by the Fadurbe Alberta or the, the, the um, apple ringing um, Anabum in, in Afrikaans and the Alberta's drop their, their seeds or their pods in um, August, September and at a time when there's very little other food to eat um, that's a life-giving form of nutrients for everything from your impala to your um, elephant, kudu, warthog, um, monkeys, baboons. Um, so it's that cycle of life in the dry season having such vitality from the trees um, makes it a very special area and all the animals are sort of congregated around these Alberta trees. Graham and I waited for the afternoon light to get a little better and we headed out to a different section of the park. We stumbled upon a breeding herd of elephant having a mud bath. Elephants do that for numerous reasons. One reason is to cool down. Normal water won't last as long as the mud that sticks to their skin. Another reason is the removal of parasites. Once the elephants are done with the mud bath, they will go to a dry stump and rub off the dried mud and this removes ticks and parasites from their skin.
cool. So, yeah, we've just come down for a little stroll to the edge of one of the channels that runs down the edges of Zambezi. Um, these channels are very rich in bird life in particular. Um, at the moment, there's quite a few elephant out there as well. The elephant like to come down onto these uh, floodplains, particularly in the afternoon for some reason. Um, so, I mean, counting, looking around, there's two dozen elephant already. Uh, the morning they're typically inland in the jess um, or, or up onto the shelf but in the afternoon they start making their way down and you can often find them down here so um, yeah, but the bird life is prolific you've got all your plovers your lap wings you've got egrets um, herons we had a fish eagle over our, over my shoulder here um, it was on the bank when you arrived Egyptian geese going giant kingfisher so yeah it's just really uh, long-toed plovers we saw earlier so phenomenal amount of bird life and a really good place to come out and just get the real essence of mana and um, a lot of our walking happens up in the up on the shelf um, away from the river but every now and again it is nice to come down to a big open area like this and just sit and watch so find those out find a piece of shade and just watch what's going on so always something happening by the river Morning Dirk. Morning Will. You know what, we were raving about this beautiful kettle and what a lovely kettle it is, you know, it's really very strong material. But you know this morning, a beautiful hyena visit got some hold of our kettle. We're probably going to have a luminous, um, I don't know what you're going to call it there, uh, somewhere in the bush later today. Excrement. Yeah, 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 yeah. probably because um, this hyena really thought, out of all the kettles that we have here, I mean, he chose this one. So obviously it must be fantastic quality of plastic. <laughs> um, but now we uh, minus another one. So back to the Iron Man store to get um, another collapsible kettle. You but know what's going to happen, Will? There's going to be no more kettles when I get back. No, no, no. You're going to get a fine for that. You're going to get a fine for that. That's all good and well because you know what? This kettle did many safaris. It's going to miss it. RIP kettle. But I'm going to also keep it for when we do our adventure guide qualification training to show them what happens when you leave your expensive kettles out for hyenas to chow. Early morning here at Mana Pools next to the Zambezi. It's full moon, the moon is busy setting, the hippos are grunting, fish eagles are calling and this morning's plan is we are going on a walk with Graham into the wilderness area. I am looking forward to this because this is why you come to Mana Pools. You can actually go and walk in this beautiful area. Just the formalities of a safety talk. We are now out of the comfort of our vehicles and on foot where the wild things roam and what a privilege to be doing that. Um, Emmanuel has very kindly come to assist me today. Um, he's a parks ranger. He's from my neck of the woods in Kariba so it's good to have him with us. Um, he will be at the back covering. I'll be leading the walk today. We're going to walk about four, four to five k's. We're going to walk out of here through this sort of woodland and we're going to go towards Longpool. Nice and open, the morning light. We should have some good 
photo opportunities. Right, for those of you who've walked before, um, just a few things about minor pools in particular. It's a very nice area to walk. We have the, the advantage of a very open vista to have time to look at things and get our wind right and make approaches as and when we want to. That being said, safety is of utmost importance to all of us. At the front, uh, hushed communication. If we're in close proximity, hand signals. Stop, come forward, crouch, quiet, back up. Let's move quickly. The faster my hand moves, we're going to look for cover if we have an incident. Fallen tree, a big tree, we in the wild. I can't predict what might happen at close range, what we might see. So it's important in that moment, all eyes on me. I'll try and make eye contact with all of you and we manage the situation as it develops. Look, Mana traditionally has always been a park where you could walk. Um, at one point in time, there were absolutely no rules. You could arrive here, park your car wherever you wanted, and off you could go. Um, that created many challenges. I think the busier the park has got, and, and one of the key challenges now is, is managing visitor numbers with the right infrastructure and the right code of conduct and ethics, and all credit to the stakeholders in Mana Pools and Zim Parks for working on a collaborative solution to better manage visitor experiences. Um, but one of those was pulling back the freedom to walk at your will and now providing two opportunities or two avenues to experience the park on foot and one being through the hire of a ranger from the Sim Parks office or the hire of a professional guide and doing a walking safari um, through the park um, which gives you a very unique ability to take in the park on foot uh, leave the comfort of a vehicle, leave the security of a vehicle and actually walk freely amongst this woodland, amongst the elephants in particular and with some of the more recognised guides who specialise in, in walking um, as, as the key offering. You have some incredible encounters with, with wild dog, lions. Um, so it is a fantastic destination to walk and I highly encourage everyone who comes to minor pools just walk at least once. Just come here up to this massive big fig tree. We're on the floodplain here in minor pools. There's in busy figs. Massive trees. Um, not many of them left, but around the Mucheni's couple of areas in minor, you've got these very, very big fig trees. And they have such a cool vibe about them. Always nice to walk past. Always got a story to tell. Um, always imagine if you had African version of Swiss family Robinson building a tree house or a house in a tree. This <laughs> is the type of tree you would have used but um, huge lateral branches, massive canopy, um, and a massive life source for um, your pigeons, your birds, your starlings, and also dropping fruit for your baboons. So for your impala, we feed with the baboons, um, elephant, monkeys, um, just a massive uh, sort of presence in the ecosystem. And fig trees play a very, very important role in that, providing food in the, in the drier months.
one of the reasons why we traditionally only come to minor pools in the drier months is that a lot of the floodplain in minor pools is completely inundated with water from about late December, January, February into March. And this Alberta behind me, you can see the water mark from the last season or consecutive seasons. Um, we're in a big open area, which is a big drainage line into the minor river, um, which leads into minor mouth uh, from a viewpoint location re reference point. Um, but this, these in inland um, depressions are full for three or four, even five months of the year in a good rainy season. And um, it's just a massive inland sort of lagoon. The bird life is incredible. Um, and the, the park changes, it just turns into an emerald green and hence the reference to the emerald season or the green season safari. But minor pools is traditionally very difficult to get to in the, in the rains. Um, the access road in stays open, but pretty much all these game drive routes are closed for the, for the off season. The walk was really awesome and we were super lucky to get back to camp with Mick's famous Italian eggs. You, 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 you. Minor pools, elephants, I think are the, the reference to very relaxed elephants um, across the subcontinent. Certainly the gonorrhoea or elephants are the other end of the spectrum. That being said, all elephants should be given respect and a wide berth and we are in their environment and it's important that when we are interacting with these animals, we are just maintaining um, a good level of respect for the wildlife uh, and not pushing them. But they do walk through your campsite, they walk past your vehicle. They are very relaxed around people, which I think is risky and that it gives people a false sense of security um, and the elephants walking through your campsite can also be very different to the elephants you encounter away from the camp. Uh, uh, there's always always a perspective that when elephants walk into your campsite they're coming into your space um, but as soon as you leave your campsite and you go out into the park itself they are very different very different animal and they've associated the hu human form for many many centuries with risk and danger um, being humans. Um, we've hunted elephants since the beginning of time and that hasn't instinctive, instinctively left them. So it's always good to be respectful, uh, listen to your guides, listen to the rangers uh, and have a safe enjoyable experience. Um, but if done correctly and through the appropriate channels it's an incredible experience and a very spiritual and moving experience to be in the presence of so many elephants um, in such a special place. With a game viewer, we got everyone on board for a game drive, and I was specifically looking at a tiny bird to film. I've seen them since we arrived in Mono Pools. This bird flies in flocks, and hundreds of them. So the only music we think would be fitting is classical music, with a red-billed quilia. <laughs> The quilia in, in mana at certain times of the year, now in, in the dry season especially, um, you get these flocks that all congregate into these mega flocks. Um, and they're incredible to see landing and moving like a swarm of 
locusts, literally. And you can see why they, they classified as pests in some parts of, of Africa. But in Mana, it's amazing. It's one of the few places you can see them. Um, they roost in the reed beds on the, in the river, on the channels, and then they, they move across in the morning and you see these sort of weaving, forming grey clouds of, of quilia coming across the river in the morning light. Um, and the murmuration of quilia in the afternoon sun is a, is a really cool shot for photographers. So do take note of them when you're out and about and yeah, if you're lucky enough to catch them, it's, it's a pretty cool experience. Mana Pools is one incredible overlanding destination and also a destination that you will yearn to get back to as soon as you leave. This was our last game drive as a group and anywhere you point your camera, you will find a beautiful scene. Very importantly for us on this particular series with Iron Van Adventures was to use a local operator. Not only do they know the area much better and logistically they are more connected, but we also feel that it's time that we should start using local operators to empower them in their countries as well. South Africa has got the market. There are a lot of people that are exploring overland, 4x4 driving, wanting to explore our neighboring countries. But I, saw, I think it's also time that we need to start looking at how can we partner with our local operators. It's not about us all the time. We would also like to make sure that those operators get their fair share of the South African market. And I know, I understand, people want to do things like on their own, they want to explore on their own, people want to do tag-along drives, but once you engage a local operator, i.e. Graham Shop, it just becomes a far more amazing, adventurous experience. Because these people know places that we don't know. And they take us to their special places and they show us what they've worked hard for over the years. And in a way, we can just sit back and enjoy that amazing experience while we're crafting the memories they are crafting their skill to host international groups in the country. This trip was nothing short of extraordinary. From the thundering water at Victoria Falls to the majestic gorges of Chisarira, the beautiful sunset at Matusa Donna to the adventure-driven ferry across Lake Kariba. The journey to Monopoles has become imprinted in all of us. The fireside chats, the banter, and the incredible wildlife scenes that our beautiful continent of Africa holds. Thank you, Zimbabwe. We'll be back. The last two weeks with the Iron, Iron Man, Iron Van crew series has been uh, been pretty cool. I think the first takeaway was it's been a lot easier and more relaxed than I perhaps expected. I think due to the fact that everyone's done this several times, uh, it's not your first radio. 
Um, there's a unique mix of personalities and characters, but the underlying connection between all of us is that we all enjoy getting out in a, in a vehicle and, and visiting these special places and telling the story of, of what's waiting for the, the traveller. So we've been an absolute pleasure and full of reflection and, and um, wisdom, but in a way that full of humour. So there's been a lot of banter, there's been a lot of um, cuck flying around between everyone over coffee. First thing in the morning as you wake up, guys are tearing into each other, but it makes it hugely rewarding and there's been a couple of sayings that have come about. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just been a really special trip and I, I really am pleased that you guys have made your way to Zim. You've You've told the story, um, you've highlighted what's on offer, you've highlighted some of the challenges behind why we need tourism um, and I think you've gone about it in a way that promotes uh, responsible travel to this country, a respectful travel to the country um, and one that creates an exciting opportunity for Zimbabwe going forward. So, as one of the sayings on the trip, Jai Raini, it's been lucky having you guys. So. Yeah, thanks for coming and safe trip home and uh, look forward to seeing the magic you guys put together. And that's it folks, that's the end to our epic Zimbabwe expedition. It was one of the best overlanding trips I have ever been on. We have been met with friendly people, people that are accommodating, people that want to help you. Zimbabweans are just awesome people and the scenes around Zimbabwe have been out of this world, something I have never seen in my life before and it's my first time really exploring Zimbabwe. So please put it on your bucket list. I just want to thank uh, Graham Sharp from 16 Degrees South and then also want to thank all my friends Mick, Colfain, Frick, Will, Tina, Caleb, um, Robbie and Carlos. Thank you so much for joining us on this trip. If you do like the videos please like and subscribe and share with your friends and see you next time. It was one for the books. Thank you so much. Cheers.